This week, there are two new items that you probably have never seen before with integrals. So let's review a little bit from last week and then we'll talk about this week's material. But before we get into that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you about uh, the week after we come back from vacation. Um, week number 16 is a very strange week. Um, week number 16 starts on January 2nd, which is a Thursday. So we have school on Thursday and Friday, and then we have school, uh, week number 16 is Thursday, Friday, and then it's the following week. So it's really a long week um, when you think about it in terms of um, the pace chart. However, if there is no session on Thursday, that means that, you know, basically Thursday and Friday are wasted days. So what I'm going to do over vacation is I'm going to make a recording for week number 16, and I'm going to put it in there so you can watch it on Thursday. So if you wanted to do your work on Thursday and Friday and get it all done for week 16 before um, that following Monday, you're absolutely welcome to do that. And then that following Monday, instead of having a live lesson, um, we're just going to have it as a help session. So you can come in and ask any questions you have on any of the material that we've been working on. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. Last week we talked about um, taking integrals using um, the, what do we call that, substitution method. Okay. Um, so in this problem right here, if I was going to use, so let's just review substitution method. Um, what I would do on a problem like this, first thing is I'd let u equal, so in this problem I would let u equal 7x minus 2. Then I would take the derivative of this, so u prime is equal to 7 uh, dx, d, uh, dx. And then I would solve for dx, so I divide through by, so u prime is equal over 7 is equal to dx. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute um, things that I know what it is, and I really should write this as just du. Um, so I'm just going to put u in place, so this would be the integral of 28. And then 7x minus 2 is my u value to the third times, in place of dx, I'm going to put du over 7. Simplify this down. That becomes a 4. I can bring the 4 on the outside of the integral, so this would be 4 integral u to the third du. So this is the only thing that I have to know how to take an integral of is u to the third. So I just add 1 to it, so u to the fourth over 4. Oops, that's a bad 4. So u to the fourth over 4, and then I have that 4 on the outside, so that's just going to cross off. So my integral is just going to be 7x minus 2 all raised to the fourth power. And that is called u substitution. Any questions on u substitution, Caleb? All right. Here's one for you to do. x times cosine of 2x squared. Okay? So tell me what your uh, integral would be for this one. Surprise, Henry's not here today. It's a little disappointing because he's going to miss the two new things today. One-fourth sine 2x squared. Okay. So in this problem, if I let u equal 2x squared, so du is equal to 4x um, dx, and then du over 4x equals dx. So then if I um, rewrite things, I have x cosine of u times, and then du over 4x, x's cross off, 
I'm going to put the one fourth on the outside. So I've got the integral, one fourth integral of cosine of u. Now the integral of cosine is just sine. So I've got one fourth sine of u. Well, my u value is 2x squared, so I just put that back in there. So one fourth sine of 2x squared is correct. Very nice work. All right. This is basically the same thing, so I want to skip on because we have some pretty intense things to do today. Today we're going to be talking about integration by parts and partial fractions. I think integration by parts is not too bad. Partial fractions, mm, not so fun. <laughs> All right. There is There are two different ways to do... Uh, this type of um, integration. I'm going to tell you that tabular integration is probably the easiest way of doing it. Um, the other method is pretty tough. So I'm just going to stick with one method. Um, so here we have an integral, x squared times e to the x. What you want to do is you want to set up a table, and one of the functions you're going to take the derivative of. And one of the functions, you're going to take the integral of. So it's like, oh, man. So one, you're going to take the derivative. One, you're going to take the integral. Um, the first one, I always take the derivative of the first one. So I just find f prime. And the second one, I always find the integral. Now, how do you know which one is which? Well, any time you have two functions. So I've got x squared here, and I have e to the x here. When you take the derivative, you're going to keep taking the derivative until you get down to 0. Well, if I kept taking the derivative of e to the x, I'll never get to zero. Well, I, it's just going to be e to the x, 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 stuff any time. But the next one's going to be e to the x, right? So it's never going to get to zero. Well, x squared, yeah. So if I used x squared, I take the derivative of x squared, that's 2x. If I take the derivative of 2x, I get 2. If I take the derivative of 2, I get zero. Ah, that tells me to stop. So that means I have four terms here. So that means I have to have four integrals or four terms here. So I've got e to the x. Take the integral of e to the x, I get e to the x. Take the integral of e to the x, I get e to the x. Take the integral of e to the x, I get e to the x. All right. Now, this is where it's, we're basically done. All we have to do is draw lines here. We multiply. This is my first term. So it's x squared e to the x. So that's, that's going to be a positive, and then, then it's going to be minus. So it's going to be 2x times e to the x. Well, that's going to give me negative, two, that's negative 2x e to the x. And then I just keep going down until I don't have any more terms to do. And this is going to be positive, so it's going to be plus 2 e to the x. And that is my integral. That is a crazy integral when you think about it. But the steps are fairly easy to do. I mean, it's not like they're difficult, but it is. I mean, you try to do any other method. I mean, you look at it and you're like, okay, I, I, why don't I just use u substitution? Well, guess what? If you let x equal or x squared be u, then 2x, well, that's not going to cross off this. If I let u equal x, that's not going to cross off the x squared. U substitution does not work in problems like this. So, there, is, there has to be another method of doing it, and that this is what we call it. We call it tabular integration. Okay. So here's my next problem. I've got x to the third sine of x. Okay. Again, I'm just going to set up a table. I'm going to do the derivatives of one of the functions, and I'm going to do the integral of the other function. Okay. Which function do you think I'm going to do the derivative of? And remember, when you take the derivative, it has to get back to zero, or else this does not work. So what, what function am I going to x to the third? Right. So I'm going to do x to the third. Then I take the derivative, I get 3x squared. Take the derivative, I get 6x. Take the derivative, I get 6. Take the derivative, I get 0. Stop. I'm down to zero. Now, this one, I have to do the integral. Now, I might write this out because <laughs> sine of x, I always do the derivative, you know, so I have it in my head, uh, then negative sine of x, 
and then negative cosine of x. Okay, so if I take the integral of sine of x, I go down here, right? So that gives me negative cosine of x. Then I just keep going up one, so that's going to be negative sine of x. And then if I go up again, I get cosine of x and sine of x. All right, so that those should be integrals. Now, again, we start positive, negative, positive, negative. All right, so I've got x to the third times negative x, or negative cosine of x. So my integral is going to be x to the third. It's going to be negative, right, because the negative times the positive is going to, so that's going to be negative x to the third cosine of x. And then I've got a negative times a negative, which is positive, so that's going to be plus 3x squared sine of x. Positive times positive, so that's going to be 6x cosine of x. And 6 times, uh, so that's going to be and a negative, so that's going to be negative 6 sine of x. Whew. Oh, man. That is a crazy integral. All right. Any questions, Caleb, on that? So I'm going to let you try the next one. <laughs> All right. And here is the work for the last one. Here is the integral. Hopefully we got the same thing. Oh, I forgot to put a plus C on there. All right. So here's one. Now, this one's pretty easy. I didn't want to start you off with a tough one. So this one is pretty easy. Try it, and you can work, do your work on the board, or you can do it on your desk and then just give me the answer. But what would you get here for your answer? I will work it out on the board because I want to make sure people that are watching this will see it. Just want to see if you've got the hang of it. Negative x sine of x minus cosine of x. Okay, I don't know because I haven't, I haven't done the problem yet, but let's try it out. So I'm going to do f prime of x. So I'm going to use x. So if I take the derivative of x, I get 1. Take the derivative of 1, I get 0. Okay, that's pretty easy. Then I'm going to take the, the integral of g of x. Well, g of x, I'm going to let the cosine of x. Well, the integral of cosine of x is sine of x. The integral of sine of x is negative cosine of x. All right. So I do my, so this is plus. This is minus. So x sine of x. Uh oh, I don't agree with you. And then a minus times a minus, so that's going to be plus cosine of x. Now I ended up with, you have a negative x sine of x. I ended up with a positive. Um, do you see where, I mean, I'm not looking at your work, so I'm not 100% sure where you made, made your mistake. I am correct. Yay. It doesn't happen often. <laughs> All right. Let's try another one x squared e to the x, okay, so a little bit tougher, and you know, what makes it tougher is when you have the higher this power is, so if I, if I gave you the integral of x to the fifth e to the x, well, yeah, that's going to be a lot harder, well, it's not going to be harder, it's just going to be longer, because let's, let's do f, let's do it to the fifth, because now, if I do f prime of x, that's going to be x to the fifth, well, that's going to be 5x to the fourth, 20x to the third, 60x squared, 120x, 120, zero. Okay, so we're going to have all these terms. However, the integral of e to the x is always going to be e to the x, right? So I've got e to the x, 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 e to the x. Okay, so that they're all e to the x. So now I just draw my 
So that's plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So if I wrote this out, whew, uh, that would be um, x to the fifth, e to the x, minus 5x to the fourth, e to the x, plus 20x to the third, e to the x, minus 60x squared, e to the x, blah, 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 blah. So it really isn't that difficult. I mean, if you get some difficult integral problem or, you know, problems where you have to take crazy integrals, it gets a little bit tougher. But the, the concept is pretty easy. Um, I will tell you, I learned the other method, and it would have taken me hours to do this problem because you can only do one step at a time. And there's like five different steps here. And then you have, oh, this one, I would have, I would never get this answer if I had to do it the other method. This method just is so clean. It's so easy to use. The other method is whew, just so confusing. That's why I don't show that method anymore. I used to show it. And my kids would be so messed up and say, like, okay, forget it. Let's just, let's just do it this way. And, and they don't ever ask you how you do the problem. All right. So this is a problem on an AP test. Okay. It says evaluate the indefinite integral. Well, the first thing I would do if I was doing a problem like this is I would see if U substitution would work. Well, U substitution doesn't work in a problem like this. Okay. Because I can see right away. I could let 9x be my u value, but if I take the derivative of that, that gives me 9. Well, that's not going to cross off that x. So I have to use um, the tabular integration, okay? So tell me what my answer should be, a, b, c, or d. I will, I'm just going to set it up. I'm not going to do it yet. So I would use f prime of x. I'm going to go x here. And the integral g of x is going to be cosine 9x. Oops, that should be all inside parentheses. Okay. So if I take the integral of x, the 1, 0. The integral of cosine of 9x, isn't that sine? of 9x over 9. And then, isn't the integral of sine 9x, isn't that negative cosine 9x over 81? If my, inter if my integration is still, my integration is still correct, <laughs> if I still know how to integrate, All right? So now it's just plus minus. So I'm, I look like I have x sine of 9x over 9 plus, because I have a minus minus here, so it's going to be plus um, cosine 9x over 81. Uh, no, 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 um, because we're taking integrals here. An integral, you always divide by. So, for example, yeah, if you had sine of 2x, and I wanted to take the integral of this. The integral of this is negative cosine. Uh, let's just, let's do cosine. Um, so if I, if I said, okay, I've got cosine of 2x, and I want to take the integral of this. Okay. Well, the integral of this, so if I go backwards, the integral of cosine is sine 2x divided by 2. Now, why do I divide by 2? Well, guess what? If you take the derivative of this, you better get this back, right? Well, if I take the derivative of this, sine of 2x, well, that's cosine 2x times 2. Well, that's where it crosses off that 2 on the bottom. Booyah, I do get I do get the answer. You're, you're basically using U substitution. Right, 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 right. You are that, yes. Yes, you are. Okay? 
I don't think of it as U substitution, but you really are using U substitution. I just, I've just done those types of problems so many times that you just know that it's over when you do a sine or cosine or something. It's just going to be divided by that number. It just is always that way. Okay, does that make, does that make sense? All right. I'm going to do one more, and then we're going to head on to the next topic because the next topic is going to blow your mind away. All right. So try this one. This one's, a, this one's fairly easy, I believe. But remember, what is, the, what is the integral of e to the 6x? Do you know what that is? I mean, you could use u substitution, but you should know it by heart. I mean, you've done, hopefully you've done enough of these. Yes, exactly. Ah, uh, it's really 1 6 e to the 6x. You've got to leave that 6x in your exponent, though, right? All right, I'm going to start working this out. You better finish before I do. <laughs> All right, so f prime of x, I'm going to let that be x. Derivative of that is 1, derivative of that is 0. e to the 6x, okay, the, the integral of that is e to the 6x over 6. Integral of this is e to the 6x over 36. All right, so I take my, so this is plus, this is minus. So I've got x e to the 6x over 6 minus uh, e to the 6x over 36. Oh, yeah, 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 it looks like they simplified down. <laughs> All right, no biggie. So that means I'm going to have to simplify. I'm not. I'm just looking over here to see how they simplified down. It looks like they pulled an e to the 6 out. So I'm going to pull an e to the 6x out. And that would leave me with x over 6 minus um, 1 over 36, isn't it? And then it looks like, what did they do here? It looks like they might have pulled the 1 over 36 out. So let's say if I pull the 1. Uh, can I do that? Yeah, because that would put a, so if I made that a 36 on the denominator, if I pull the 136 out, I'm left with the 6x minus 1. Oof, that's crazy factoring. Uh, e to the 6x, and then that's going to give me 6x minus 1. So letter B is correct. Yep, that was kind of crazy at the factoring type there. All right, so that is called tabular integration. It's kind of, I, I like it. It, it, it makes uh, an integral not too bad. Now we're going to talk about partial fractions. Oh. All right, first thing I want you to do is I want you to tell me what, uh, I want you to see if you know how to add a fraction together. I know you know how to add a fraction together, but what is one half? plus three-fourths, okay? Work that out, tell me what you get. Five-fourths. Did you, did you get a common denominator? Okay, have you ever seen this method of adding fractions together? Multiply on the diagonal here. So 1 times 4 is 4. And if this is a plus sign, we put a plus sign. If it's a minus sign, we put a minus sign here. And then 3 times 2. All over, just multiply across the bottom, 3 times 4. So that gives me 4 plus 6 over 8, which gives me 10 over 8 which gives me five-fourths. Have you ever seen that method for adding a fraction together? It's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Now, tonight, we're going to go backwards on this. <laughs> 
okay? We're going to, what we want to do is they're going to give you a partial fraction, a, a function over a function, and we're going to break it up. We're going to, we're going to basically cross multiply um, the terms. And I'll show you a problem. Okay, this is called partial fractions. So if they gave me a problem like this one right here, 8x plus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 2. Okay. We want to take an integral of this thing. Okay. We want to take, that's, that's basically what we're going to do tonight is we're going to take an integral of this. Well, good luck. Uh, it, it, this is a beastly problem. It is a beastly problem for any student. But what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to break this up into two separate problems so we can take the integral very easily of these two separate problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a function that looks like this and we're going to rewrite it as two separate fractions. You're going to be thinking to yourselves like, what is he talking about? All right, so let's take a look here. Uh, I should have had a clean sheet. Okay, so if I gave you a problem like this, all right, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure the bottom factors. If the bottom doesn't factor, you're really, there's nothing you can do. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Well, that factors to x minus 3x minus, or x plus 1, doesn't it? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this thing up. We're going to say that, and you don't know what the a and b values are, but we're going to say that a over x minus 3 plus b over x plus 1 is going to equal this, right? Doesn't it? We're just going to split it up. Just like if I had, uh, just like if I had um, 10 eighths rewrite 10 eighths as, um, what could I write it as? I could break this up. I, I, now I'm just thinking outside the box if I, if I broke this up. So I could write it as a over 4, ah, a over 4 plus b over 2, right? You can break that up because if you cross multiply, you're going to get the same answer. So what you're going to do is you're just going to break it up into two separate fractions. And now what we're going to do is we know that if we cross multiply, we should get the 5x minus 3, right? So I'm going to cross multiply here because that gives me my top of my fraction. So a times x, so I'm just going to write it a times x plus 1 plus, and then I'm going to cross multiply this way, b times x minus 3. Well, that is equal to 5x minus 3, doesn't it? Okay. That is probably the hardest part of the problem, is just breaking it up and then you know, rewriting it. So now the rest of it is just algebra. I mean, it's just algebra trying to solve for A and B. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply through here. So I get AX plus 1A plus, and then I'm going to multiply. So that gives me BX minus 3B is equal to 5x minus 3. Okay, so far so good? Okay, I'm going to get my x terms together. So I'm just going to rewrite this as ax plus bx plus, uh, let's see here, 1a minus 3b. And then I'm going to factor out an x. And this is, this is where it gets really interesting. I know that 5 times x, that's what it has to equal. Doesn't this have to equal 5 times x? Because x times this has to equal this, this part of the function, doesn't it? So I'm just going to say a plus b has to equal 5. And then I know this, I know 1a minus 3b, has to equal 
negative 3. What is this? This is a system of equations that we have to solve for A and B. Uh-oh, system of equations? Yeah, it's a system of equations. So how do we solve a system of equations? I usually do it by the addition method. So I'm going to multiply, because if I add straight down now, neither of the variables cross out. So I'm just going to multiply through by negative 1 every term. Now if I add straight down, the a's cross off. I'm left with negative 4b is equal to negative 8. b is equal to 2. So now I have my b value. If I plug 2 back in here into one of these equations, because the original one was a plus b is equal to 5, right? So if I put 2 in there, a equals 3. So now I go back up to my original problem up here, and I put 3 for a, and I put 2 for b. So my this thing can be rewritten as 3x minus 3 plus, what was my b value, 2? 2, 2x plus 1. If you do not agree, multiply this out. You will get this as an answer. That is called partial fraction decomposition. Now, why do we do that? Because if they ask me to find the integral of this, well, that's the same thing as asking for the integral of this. And if you remember the integral of a something like this, I would just bring the 3 to the outside. So this is just going to be 3 natural log of x minus 3 plus 2 natural log of x plus 1. Done. This is what we're looking for. We're looking for the integral of that whole thing. And this is the integral. Whew. Thank goodness that we have like 30 more minutes left so we can go through some more problems. All right. So I, I guess it's all completed. So here's a problem. It says, why would you need to know this method? Suppose you want to find the integral of 8x plus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 2. You have, to, you have to split this apart. You have to do um, this method. So if I was going to do this problem, first thing I would do is I'd look at it and it's like, okay, I've got two terms on the bottom. So I'm going to do a x minus 1 plus b x plus 2 is equal to, and then it just equals the top, 8x plus 1. That is how we set it up. Now, the rest of it is just, you know, so now I'm going to cross multiply here. So I've got a times x plus 2 plus b times x minus 1 is equal to 8x plus 1. I'm going to multiply through here. So that gives me ax plus 2a plus bx minus b. My next step is to get my x values together. So that gives me ax plus bx plus 2a minus b. Now I'm going to factor on x. All right, so now I know that a plus b has to equal 8 because that's in front of the x term, right? This is the x term. So a plus b has to equal 8. So I've got a plus b has to equal 8. And I also know that 2a minus b, 2a minus b has to equal 1. Now I have a system of equations. The addition method for this one works really well because the b's are going to just cross out. So I'm going to be left with 3a is equal to 9, a is equal to 3. If a is equal to 3, 3 plus what equals 8? Well, b must equal 5. So now I've just, so I'm going to put 
3 here. So I've got the integral of 3 x minus 1 plus the integral of 5 over x plus 2. Now if I take the integral of this, remember the, the integral of 1 over x is equal to, oops, that's an x, is equal to the natural log of x. So same concept here, I just bring the 3 to the outside. So I've got 3 natural log of x minus 1 plus 5 natural log x plus 2. That is the integral of this problem right here. All right, Caleb, any questions? You ready for one? Okay, so here, here's the problem worked out. So here's the answer. I think it's the same thing that we got. All right, here's your problem. Find, well, my problem. What I want to ask is, what is the integral of this problem right here? All right, so I'm going to turn off my mic. I'm going to go let my dog in the house, and I'm going to let you work. I want to see what you get for an answer, okay? All right. Any answers? Or is it still working? Not sure if that's correct or not. Let me see if I have an answer. Hmm. So let's see here. Uh, 
oh, they don't have the answer. But they have 2x minus 1 here. Oh, that's because they didn't ask you to find the integral. However, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think your answer is right. And the reason is, I don't think you took the integral correctly. I'm not I'm not 100% sure, but let's let's try this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor this thing. Okay? Um I'm going to use the cheater method. So I've got 2x 2x I've got 6 on the out uh, multiply I get 6 so that would be negative 6 negative 1. I have to uh, is that right? Negative uh, that would be positive 6. Negative 6 and negative 1 that that works. So that means I have to divide a six. Oh, I'm uh, I'm cheating with a two. <laughs> so I'm gonna fact, I'm gonna divide a two out. So I get x minus three, and then two x minus one. All right. Oh. <laughs> no, because you gotta you gotta make sure you factor this thing down. So now I have x minus thirteen over x minus 3, 2x minus 1. So now my next step is I'm going to put a over x minus 3 plus b over 2x minus 1 is equal to x minus 13. Okay. So now if I cross multiply, I end up with a 2x minus 1 plus b x minus 3 is equal to x minus 13. You multiply through here, so I get 2, now I get 2x, uh, ah, 2xa, 2xa minus a plus bx minus 3b. I want to put my x's together, so I have 2xa plus bx minus a minus 3b and then i'm going to factor out an x so i get x 2a plus b is equal to ah, sorry minus a minus 3b is equal to x minus 13. all right so now i know my x value is a one so i know that 2a plus b is equal to one i also know that negative a minus 3b is equal to negative 13. Well, it's a addition method. So if I multiply through here by 2, I end up with negative 2a minus 6b is equal to negative 26. If I add straight down, the a's cross off. I'm left with negative 5b is equal to negative 25. So b is equal to 5. So if b is equal to 5, if I put 5 back in here, 2a plus, so that's negative 4, so a has to be negative 2. So my integral is going to be, so I'm going to put negative 2 here, that's the integral of negative 2 over x minus 3 plus 5 over 2x minus 1. And then I can take the integral of both of them. So does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, if you don't use the right denominators, you are not going to get the right answer. And all they did was they just worked it out. They just um, did the partial fraction. They didn't take the integral. Okay, so that's the only difference between our problem and this one. All right, I'm going to give you another whack at it. Here you go. Make sure you factor the denominator.
All right. Time is a ticking. <laughs> What'd you get for an answer? All right. Let's take a look at it. If I was working this problem out, first thing, you can factor. Um, x minus 4, x minus 3. So then I'm going to have a x minus 4 plus b x minus 3. Now, some students will say, Mr. Shanklin, does it matter if there's an x minus 3 here and x minus 4? No, it makes no difference at all. Your answer is still going to be the same. All right. So now I'm going to cross multiply. So I've got a x minus 3 plus b x minus 4 is equal to 2x plus 1. Uh, so ax minus 3a plus bx minus 4b. So if I factor or if I put the x's together, ax plus bx minus 3a minus 4b. Factor on x, so a plus b minus 3a minus 4b is equal to 2x plus 1. Well, I know that a plus b has to equal 2 now. So a plus b has to equal 2. And then I also know that negative 3a minus 4b has to equal 1. Well, um, I'm going to multiply through by 3 here. There's a 6 here. So if I add straight down, the a's cross out. And I'm left with negative 1b is equal to, is that 7? So b is equal to negative 7. If b is equal to negative 7, I, I forgot what I had there. a plus b equals 2. So if b is negative 7, uh, a has to be 9. So now I'm left with the integral of 9 over x minus 4 plus the integral of negative 7 over x minus 3. Integral here is just going to be 9 natural log of x minus 4 plus negative 7, natural log of x minus 3. Ah, you've got, you've got the right answer there, Caleb. Nice job. That is it for today. We had two different integral techniques. We had tabulation, and we have partial fractions. Pretty cool stuff. I mean, I, I would not want to try to figure this stuff out on my own, though, because there it is. It is pretty tough, and the way they teach it on Khan Academy is not the greatest. All right, Caleb, you have a great winter break, okay? <laughs> awesome. All right. Bye.